don't think you're smarter than the market, okay? I don't care how many years you're trading, just don't, okay? You, you'll get humbled faster than you can blink and more important is you. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody uh, is doing uh, well. Hope everybody had a good day of trading. Uh, just like always, guys, just a quick reminder, we really, really do appreciate uh, all the love and support. Uh, if you haven't done so already, subscribe, get notified when we are uh, up uploaded, and like the videos uh, to help support the channel. So let's talk about the tape, right? This is where, again, we continue to talk about the greatest reality show uh, that's not on television, right? Look, I, I'm doing this for a long time. Um, I've been in a lot of bull markets. I've been in a lot of, bear, I can't say a lot, a good handful of bull, bull markets and a good handful of bear markets. And the one thing that is certain, okay, and I say this all the time, and repeat this with me. If you have somebody hold their hands on both sides, right? Turn around and say, we don't know shit, right? We don't know shit. So anybody who's trying to forecast the market, who's trying to guess where things are going to be three weeks from now, three months from now, three years from now, can we at least get it right tomorrow, right? That's the whole point. Is, can we, is it so much to ask for that we can get it right tomorrow? And that's kind of the name of the game. You know, I, I've always said this. You know, we're not getting ready for what's going to happen for next week. We're getting ready for tomorrow, right? We're getting ready for the data that we collected on the close that's kind of going through charts and our, our research for the day. And let's talk about the last, the last three days, right? So you had the Powell, right? The, the power of the Powell, okay? Uh, Powell, big, big move. Uh, they talked about the 50 basis points kind of curbing down, maybe holding down a little bit of the inflationary uh, narrative, and the market went absolutely nuts. You, right? you saw the Qs uh, go up 4.4% you know, in about two hours. The next day, right? The next day, and again, by the way, uh, it engulfed two weeks worth of selling, right? Bullish, right? Reclaimed everything. The next day, even though it was an inside day, okay, we reclaimed the previous day's channel and progressed on price action, right? That's deemed bullish. Friday, right? Friday. Friday came along, you had a strong jobs number, right? Um, and unlike the last two strong jobs numbers that crushed the market, the market, again, if you watch the weekend video, the market uh, did great, right? Uh, they made back 85% of the pre-market losses, and it looked super duper really good going into this week, right? We held the five-day moving average, and we reclaimed back the 150 that it kind of lost the day before an inside day. So everything looked good, right? Everything looked promising. But remember, just because something looks good doesn't mean it is good, right? From afar, right? From afar, really, really far. My mother-in-law resembles a human being, right? Same flesh, same blood that we all dripping. We get closer, you realize it's Lucifer's spawn, right? The woman of Satan. So not everything looks good from afar and, and, and looks good from a near. Before stocks need to go higher, or go lower, they need to confirm, right? Everything that we have on the table for going into the next day is based on data, right? It's literally based on data. So last night, um, I had a you know, pretty good watch list. I had some really good levels uh, that I was watching for today. And you know, you woke up this morning, you saw the NASDAQ futures down, you know, 20, 30 handles, nothing, right? Not a big deal. And then slowly but surely, you're starting seeing a little bit of nuggets kind of drop, right? Little headlines here, little headlines there, but nothing really crazy. Remember, again, super bullish that the bulls defended the jobs number on Friday and continued to build potentially going into this week. And in the morning, you started seeing a little bit of headlines. There was chatter that um, Tesla was going to cut 20, you know, cut some production from China and this, that, and the third, and blah, blah, blah. They took Tesla down. And then, you know, moments later, they came out and said, ah, I don't know if this is really, if this is even real news. The stock started moving up. And then slowly but surely, we realized, well, wait a minute. The stock just moved up basically into supply uh, into Friday's breakdown. So we'll get to Tesla in a second, right? So the most important part, and, and again, I, I say this in, in the nicest way possible, right? 
stop being that you know stop being that trader who thinks they know it all you don't know anything right i don't know anything you don't know anything you know we we, we do our best right we do our damnedest to to research the night before to get ready for the next day right not the day after the day after that the day after that right not arbor day or flag day or groundhog beaver day whatever the hell it's called right it's all about tomorrow and two things are either going to happen our research is going to confirm and usually good things are going to happen or it's not and we're going to have to pivot no pun intended to the other side of the market and that's exactly what we did here and the, the, what I what I didn't like, right? What I didn't like, what I saw today was the idea that we gave back half the bar, right? Gave back the half the Powell bar for absolutely no reason. Now again, you can make an argument. Well, maybe this was, you know, maybe this was uh, a delayed reaction from the jobs number. How much more of a delayed reaction you had? You had six and a half hours on Friday to figure it out, right? So I don't know if that was that. But if you look at the final tallies, you know. They're, they're going to show you for it. Number one, we lost half the bar on the Qs, and that's not a good thing. Uh, S&P today uh, was down a little bit less than 2%, but again, that's, you know, that, that's something to, to think about because if you look at the S&P, right? If you look at the S&P, this is now three days in a row of lower highs, and S&P led us up. The problem with the S&P uh, leading us up, think about what's in the S&P, a lot of financials, right? If you look at a lot of financial stocks tonight, you're gonna see why the market kind of held down, right? Look at Goldman Sachs. Look at Bank of America, right? Look at J.P. Morgan, right? Not a good thing. So the you know the banks uh, definitely led uh, the market lower today. Uh, you had Apple that showed a lot of strength this morning and and really really reversed about face, holding on to dear life now back at the 50-day moving average. Again, that's not a good thing. Uh, you had Tesla. Remember we were just we've been talking about Tesla now off and on for a couple of weeks and hey, it just hasn't rallied, hasn't rallied, half has, hasn't rallied. We'll get to pivot in a second, but now we're getting close to the bottom of the range here. Hell, if it loses the bottom of the range here, it could start seeing these 160s. So there's a lot of moving parts going around, right? There's a lot of things you know that that are are facing us on a day-to-day -day basis. But the only thing that we have control of again is our research, right, and our ability to not to guess, right? Don't guess. It's it's our ability to kind of stay solvent until our research gets confirmed. Again. You know, if you look at, if I'm looking at my research tomorrow, again, I don't know what you want to buy, right? I don't know exactly what you want to buy. Is it possible we turn around and go higher tomorrow? Of course, but that's the whole point, right? We have notes, we have our research, we have our data, and let's see if it confirms tomorrow. If not, again, we'll pivot, right? We'll pivot and we'll see exactly what's going on, on the upside. But again, uh, from the, you know, just from the surface, uh, again, I don't know how you could turn around and say I'm super duper bullish for tomorrow. Again, anything could happen, but we don't know how, uh, we don't know how we make uh, that statement. So again, here's the, you know, here's the numbers, right? Here's the numbers that we have to pay attention to. So the QQQs uh, in the last couple of days reclaimed the 510 and the 150 in the last three days lost the 510 and 150. We're kind of in the middle of the range here. I don't want to sound the alarm yet on the Qs until we lose the bottom channel here. You see this whole rising 20-day support? If we start losing 283 on the close, then we have a whole different conversation, right? That's why at least every single night when I record these videos, I talk about have a contingency plan, right? Have a bias in that one direction, but always have a backup plan, right? Just in case the market turns and, and our research doesn't get confirmed, then we're not sitting there unprepared. We have something. That's why we're, we're always uh, we're always trying to uh, make sure that we are prepared on both sides of the market. And I'll show you exactly what uh, we talked about today on uh, the individual pivots. So until there is a, a close below 283, I don't think it's horrendous yet right but again yet so we want to make sure this whole bar uh doesn't get filled when you look at the spies uh the spies did lose the five and the 10-day moving average but again it's holding this line here i don't sound the alarm yet uh, on a broken narrative until uh the spies lose uh 396 on the close below 396 on the close you have to start getting uh, a little bit more um a little bit more aware of potential macro breakdown that would be below uh, this 90 level. Again, we're not there yet. We're just kind of, you know, we're kind of brainstorming, tossing out these numbers so you you are prepared. So, you know, if you set alerts and, th and th those areas get hit, you are going to be, uh, you're going to be prepared for what's happening next. Uh, another group that keeps on getting absolutely massacred are these um, cloud names, right? Look at snow, you know, look at snow today. Snow got, you know, beat down right they got beat down crm 
Uh, we had a really, really strong pivot in the room. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. CRM broke down. Crowd that was down like 20, you know, 20 bucks, or whatever the hell is, 20% on earnings. It's starting to roll over. It's maybe one more day, uh, maybe one or two days away from maybe testing lows. So there's a lot of there's a lot of names that, despite the strength of the market in the last you know two three days, you know again we're we're starting to get into uh, uneasy territory. Again, we'll obviously take it day by day, trade by trade. But the most important thing, guys, don't think you're smarter than the market. Okay, I don't care how many years you're trading, just don't. Okay, you, you'll get humbled faster you can blink and more important is you 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 know you lose your solvency status and that's not a good thing uh if you want to continue pressing buttons but again look at the final final tallies for the day you got the dow down 500 you got the s p down 72 points and you got the nasdaq down two percent uh down uh, 220 points on the day again we'll see again i have a ton of shorts uh shorts lined up for tomorrow but again we'll see exactly what happened but again be prepared on both sides so let's talk about the day right so this was our, you know, this was our watch list going into the day, right? And we started looking at individual pivots to the upside, right? You can see here, there was literally one short, one short, right? I was prepared back to the upside and one short. Uh, I don't believe anything triggered to the upside as we, as you could possibly imagine. Excuse me, ENPH went up like a dollar and change and they came back down, right? Nothing else, nothing else happened. That's my point, right? You have a bias. You have your research telling you what should happen, what potentially could happen. But if it doesn't happen, you have to switch gears. And that's how we switch gears. CRM 142. Remember those earnings lows plays? We talked about like LITE was the recent one uh, last week. It went from like 44 to 42 in a couple of days, right? Uh, CRM, those earnings lows plays, once they confirm, those are really, really good potential. So CRM 142 earnings low, if it builds below, can flush. CRM got absolutely massacre today right so it took down this whole 142 channel i think we even talked about this on the weekend uh weekend update uh took down macro support at 136 uh this is it went all the way down to 132 if this thing confirms today's channel this thing has room to 26 23 uh if there is more letdown uh in the market uh disney never got into uh this 100 area enph again uh went up like a dollar and change went to like the you know uh, 340 not, not, not a big move. It's so thin. Not a big move there at all. Uh, ANF obviously never got up there either. Uh, Peloton, I like, never got there. Zillow, I like, never got there. Netflix, 323, never got there. You see the message, right? Uh, Meta, Meta went up like 60, 70 cents, again, before a big reversal. Uh, AMC actually looked good for like 13 seconds. Okay, I'll stop talking about it. Uh, TTD never got up to uh, 55 level. And this is where uh, definitely the trade of the day, uh, at least for I, uh, and I think could have more, more legs ahead of us. Again, remember, it did not rally, okay? It did not rally with the rest of the market for the majority of time. Uh, 187.50, 187, if it builds below, can flush for experienced traders. Because again, at the end of the day, we were looking for an upside bias. And when that didn't happen, uh, Tesla was definitely one of the ones who stood out and led so it took out the 77 level and traded all the way down to 80 and a half right really really nice move here's where things could get potentially ignorant as the kids kids would say right you see this whole channel here right you see this whole channel going all the way back to i can't say all the way back to but like november the 29th right we got to watch this channel for tomorrow okay if this channel loses right if this whole channel loses tomorrow on tesla and they were coming for the 180s 175 170 puts right weekly puts if this thing starts losing the channel here and again you believe in the whole theory stock scrapes supply to supply and demand to demand well the next demand is 170 little little under 170 169.60s right they were betting they were coming with some pretty decent size uh, for the 175 and 170s. So Tesla definitely have to watch it for tomorrow, right? Uh, again, I don't know if this news was right, wrong today about chatter, cutting production in China, blah, blah, blah. You know, first it acted negatively, then it rallied. And then once they cleaned up the buyer, it really, really acted negatively. So this is the one I'm, I'm definitely watching tomorrow. Um, I would love to see uh, this break below uh, this end of November channel because there's a lot of potential. Uh, obviously, I will be watching uh, more continuation from CRM. Uh, look at Amazon, right? Look, dude, look at Amazon. Amazon is, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You got two weeks worth of distribution. Amazon starts losing the bottom of the channel and we have more selling. This thing looks really, really primed. 
uh, for a move down. And let me give you guys one more that I am watching. Yeah, look at Target, right? Look at Target. Uh, Target lost the 50-day moving average. Remember, they blew up on earnings. First close today below the 50-day moving average. Uh, Target confirms there's another four or five points to the earnings low. And if it closes below earnings low, there's a lot of room down to begin. So that's it, guys, right? So that's it. Remember, if this is if you're in this business, and I say this all the time, if you're in this business for likes and shares and who gives a F, right, you're doing it wrong. Guys, it's all about value. You don't need to trade every day, but if you do, make sure your, your plan, your research gets confirmed and never anticipate. All right, guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take